everyone. Welcome to SF Garnish Music Production. This is West Coast Wednesdays. My name is Justin Anchetta, your host, every Wednesday at 11 a.m. PST. Please stay in touch with us by liking, following, and subscribing to our channels. And if you don't know about our school yet, I'd like to just go through a few things toward the end of this video about our short courses, our producer program, and our academy. So stick around, and or you can fast forward to the end of this video so you can know how to sign up for our classes. For now, here are some great tricks of the trade in Ableton Live 11 Suite that will make your painting with sound that much easier. Simple and quick. We will go through techniques on how to take recorded sounds and manipulate them using simpler drum rack and changing them to MIDI. So let's get into it. So here I am in Ableton Live 11 that just came out about a month ago. If you guys have nine or 10, um, the upgrade is pretty amazing. I'm gonna go through a few things in the upgrade. To next week on Wednesday at 11, I will be going through specifically what those things are. Um, but great Max for Live new effects and uh, ways to manipulate sound. So I'm in a session right now in Ableton that <coughs> I created um, during the West Coast Wednesdays. We started this in the beginning of 2021, and we're gonna be doing this every Wednesday, 11 to 12, on all of the Garnish Music Network. Thank you to the larger conglomerate all worldwide. And so if you don't know how I created these, so these sounds, go to our YouTube page and find our playlist, and you can um, check out exactly how I created these sounds, because this was all done during our West Coast Wednesdays. I'm in session view of Ableton right now, and what I'm going to do today is, like I said before, talk about once you record your track or your sound, your instrument, what can you do with it in post-production? And um, I would say, I would even call this post-production because Ableton is like its own instrument. You can create an instrument from your instrument. And, and I'll talk more about how to do that. So let's go ahead and just play a few of these clips here. So this, is, this has a few different things going on. And then I actually go into manipulating the quantization to a triplet, just to kind of change it up, but it's the same beat. Riser. All right, so I went into a new beat here. It's kind of a new idea of all of this down here. And this is actually in, in a collaboration with one of our teachers. Hopefully, uh, Lorenzo Gordon and I will be doing something with this really soon. So what I have here is a trace that I recorded, and I'll show you the track. I have some things going on here where my frequency and my auto filter, I'll show the automation to you guys. Is going up and down to kind of get that effect. I'm just going to go ahead and solo this. All right. So what we want to do is sample this instrument. All right, so we have a lot of effects on here. Um, just so you know how to sample an instrument, why don't I go through that first? So this is our recorded track. It's called Tres, because that's the instrument. Um, let's see, can you see it right over here? Can't quite see it with the camera, but it's on the wall behind me. It's a, like an Afro-Cuban style instrument. You can hear it in Afro-Cuban music of th songs like Corte de Tula and Buena Vista Social Club. It's most pop popularized recently that way. Um, so you have your recorded track. You could also record it into Arrangement View over here. And what you can do is literally just copy and paste, right? Command V, Command C, and then paste it in, Command V over here. Okay, that's how you can switch back and forth from arrangement to session view. A lot of people think you have to record back and forth, and that's not the case. You can actually just copy and paste, which makes it really easy. So I recorded directly in here by enabling my record and then clicking it in. I have this recorded. I've already done my my warping of sound. And what I'm gonna do now is 
just create a new track. I'm going to go Command Shift T on my keyboard. Okay, this new MIDI track opens up. And in the upper left hand side, I'm going to open up something called Simpler. And this is something that I organized in my favorites right over here. I wanted to bring Simpler into my instruments because I really think that this is something that I just need to just grab quickly. There are presets in here as well, but I just grab the basic Simpler and bring that into my new MIDI track that I just created. So what Simpler does is it is a way to cut up and kind of splice up, slice up a sample. And it's as easy as clicking this and dragging it in. Now remember, if you click over here, it highlights whatever track you're on. So you need to be on the simpler track, click and hold on your waveform and drag it and drop it into your simpler device. Okay, what that does is now you can play that on your MIDI device. I have a push two in front of me. Um, in the future, I'll put a camera on it so you guys can kind of see what I'm doing with my hands. But essentially, in classic, it just, when I press it, okay, it plays. Now, I actually have to get out of solo mode here and make sure that this is going to the right area. Let's go ahead and send this somewhere else. This is going to guitar sample. Okay. This is a great um, thing to know is that if you're in sample mode and, and you want to hear the instrument, you got to make sure that's record enabled. Okay. Before I go into that routing, let's just go back to what it would come in as normally is it would send to the master guitar all because that's where it is. So let's go ahead and put it back there and So I can actually go high and low on my instrument and it's just playing that track, okay? You can also change this to one shot. Okay. And also slice. Okay, and now in slice mode, what it does is it just takes little pieces of the sound. Okay, so what we want to do is play those little pieces. If you have a keyboard, um, when you're in slice mode, it just pretty much assigns each slice to a portion of your keyboard. You can also customize these slices and put them wherever you want. Now, for us, okay, what I want to do is bring this into specifically... All right, this is already sending out, okay? Our guitar all, I already re-sent re, uh, this. Okay, normally our guitar all would go to our master channel, okay? Guitar all, good. And this actually wouldn't be engaged, right? So that's actually without any effect. I'm kind of backtracking a little bit because I had some of this set up previously and I really want to make sure you guys know how I got here. If you guys have any questions at all, please um, comment and I would love to, yeah, figure out how I can help you guys on the process of learning Ableton and any digital audio workstation. We work with Logic and Pro Tools as well. All right. So here we are. And what I want to get into right now is the ability to make these sounds. Actually, I'm realizing that you guys might be seeing my side camera. Is that true? I just want to make sure because that would be a bummer. I, I really want to make sure you guys can see my session. Let's see what's going on here. 
All right, so as I do that, I'm just gonna go to the next step here. So what I wanna do is record. It's so hard to multitask. Okay, great, you guys are seeing the right view. So what I wanna do is record um, what I'm doing. So I actually wanna take my guitar all, and instead of sending it to master, I'm gonna send it to my sample guitar channel. Okay, I set this up by going Command T and making a, sam making a new audio track. And I say audio from guitar all, which is where my today's is being sampled from. And I go into monitor auto, okay? Making sure that that's on. And also this is saying, I wanna go to sample guitar. Let's try this out now. So now I know that that's engaged because I have this delay F is on my send right here. Okay, this is how my sends got set up. Three reverbs, three delays that are all beat, beat synced into my BPM. And going back to my track. So let's go ahead and just try and play this a little bit. Okay, let's go ahead. Now I'm turning off my actual trace that I ha that I played here live, and I'm gonna try and play it now with my hand on my instrument. Now what's special about this is that on the instrument, there are ways to manipulate the sound that are different than playing it on a fretted instrument with my fingers, right? I could slide up with my finger and do different slides, but you can also do this with your adjustments on your device, um, pitch shift, okay? So on the push two, your little slidey um, device on the side, you can also um, kind of map out some knob to do this. But so when I do this, it doesn't even sound like a trace, right? Okay, so that's what I'm gonna do is just kind of record some sounds around there, okay? This is like taking your instrument and then making a new instrument from that using Simpler. We're gonna also get into drum rack and, and what you can do with that after we get into this. Here we go. All right, I'm gonna record enable the track right here so I can record these sounds. As a matter of fact, I think I want to put these effects on earlier. Okay, here's something, is if I put these effects on, it's sending that delay out, but I actually want that delay inside my chain so that it actually comes up in my sample guitar um, area right here, okay? So what I can do is go to my returns and say this F delay, this exact setup, right? 100% wet, that's quite a bit, 37%. And I have a three and a four left and right bouncing around. I'm gonna copy this, Command C, and I'm going to take my returns off, going back to my trace channel that I'm recording from and Command V. So I didn't cut it out, I copied it so that I can now just have it in there. And what happens So I can actually manipulate how much I have of this. You can now see on my sample guitar that that delay is being picked up and it will record into that sample and that's what I want. Okay, great, let's go back to our track. Now, pressing record enable right here.
trying to get some ideas out here. It could be really any part of this. Now that is recorded here. Now notice I just, I just had a lot of my different sounds coming out and there's only certain parts that I really like about this. Some parts I was making things that I didn't really like. So you can go ahead and cut this up and kind of listen back to your track. I'll just have this loop come down a little bit. I do like some of the slides going on there. So we're just kind of looking for little sounds that we like. As a matter of fact, what we can do here is take this now, copy this in, Command C, and I want to make sure that this goes right to the guitar track in session view. Or sorry, in arrangement view. Let's find out where guitar track is. I have a lot of tracks on here. We got kind of complex in the process, but I did make it yellow. So here it is right here. I'm gonna zoom out so nothing else is recorded. Command V, and I copy it in. Now what I'm doing is I'm creating a sample. Now this is something that if you are someone that wants to create sample packs on Splice of your, of your own things, if you are a multi-instrumentalist or wanna just create your own sounds to use later, this is how you wanna do that, right? And from here, you, it's the sky's the limit, really. You can manipulate this into like a bass line. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show you that more with the MIDI settings in a little bit. So here we are. Um, let's go to the end. I think I had some stuff I liked. I'm going to turn my click on up here. All right, so maybe this ending right here, I'm gonna just cut this, Command E. And now I can actually take this area and make this into either a MIDI, which we're gonna do eventually, or we can render this, Command Shift R. And I'm gonna say render as a loop. And I wanna make sure that this is not a mono track, and one reason why is that my left-right delay is bouncing around, okay? It's going left and right, and if I say mono, it's gonna just put that right in the center. I'm gonna lose that effect, and I want that. So I'll keep that stereo. I'll make sure it's a WAV file, which is a higher quality, and because it's so short, right, it really um, allows this to be a small file. We're gonna go ahead and export this, and part of this is how to organize, okay? So I have my Ableton all here and I have sounds that I'm creating. This is something you can do for yourself. Let's see here. Actually, is it in Ableton or actually, I think I put it in my splice. There we go. Just in sounds. And these are just sounds that I'm creating, some transitions and other instruments that I'm sampling. And I'm gonna name this something that makes sense. So, this is a delay trace, okay? Delay trace. And I'm gonna say the BPM, which is 92 BPM, so that people know what the BPM is. It's always good to put that BPM in your title if you're doing a sample, because um, if somebody has auto warp on, it's gonna come in um, a lot different 
Um, or if it's at tempo and they're not an auto warp, they're going to need to manipulate the sound. And it's going to, even with the complex pro, which is great warping, it's going to still change things. So put the BPM in, people can play along. I think anything within 10 BPM of that should be fine. 82 to 102 BPM or so you can still warp it and it should be fine. So I'm going to press save. It's now exporting that. Now samples render really fast because it's such a short clip and I can even go in to where that is. So let's see splice and is it just in sounds? And I recall that delay, I think I saw it. There it is. Look at that, 3.8 megabytes. It's a pretty small file. This is something that you can easily send in an in a email to a friend if you create a new one. And then right there, you can just sample it. And it's in there. Now, I would have probably taken a little more time to increase the volume on this, make sure that on my master chain, I have the different limiters set the way that's, you know, making sure that this has the best quality sound as possible. But for now, that totally works. Let's grab a few more of these and we're gonna then put them into a drum rack. So let's get into where we're at here. And let's do one of these other slide ups. I think I did it in the very beginning. All right, so I like a lot of those. And instead of having to make those all different samples, because it's so short, I can take all four of these hits and just make that one sample and then manipulate it later on in my drum rack. Okay, that's another option. So Command Shift R and render as loop is still on. You have to make sure that you change these settings if you're doing a master full song. Um, bit depth, no dither. That's all what I want. Okay, if you want more detail on doing exports and this stuff. Um, our classes are great for that. So go to sf.garnish music production for the classes. This is gonna be today's at 92 BPM again, but this is going to be um, small hits. Delay today, small hits. And I'll still in Justin sounds because I was just there. And it's rendering super fast because it's gonna short a short clip. Now that I know that those are there, Okay, I'm gonna go back into session view by pressing tab, close this side down. I'm just gonna actually take this and zero it out because I don't want that to play actually. I just want this to play on its own. Press zero on this one too. What we're gonna do now is on a new MIDI channel. Looks like I already have one here that's completely empty. I'm gonna bring a drum rack in. And let's go ahead and, let's see, I could bring in actually a drum that already is created. So, such as the Gord mother drum that I did. You can create your own drums by just doing exactly what I'm about to do with the Trace Delay tracks. So here we are. I have this in here. And our mother drum is here. I believe I have an updated version of this somewhere. It has a little bit more involved. Let me see if I can find it. Huh. Doesn't look like it's in my favorites yet. So I'll eventually get that in there. But with that said, we have a bunch of open tracks right here. Really important to know where these are and let's go ahead and organize this so I can get to that in my side view menu here or I can literally just drag and drop them from a finder window but I want to create let's see if I already have so Justin sounds okay so I already created this right here so it's a shortcut you can do that by adding a folder and just directing where you placed your sounds, right? I did mine in this Justin Sounds and it has my samples that I'm slowly creating and look at this. Delay Trace is right next to each other and they're already being sampled. I'm gonna copy both of them, drag them into my drum rack. 
and here we are. Now, even though I didn't render these at the optimum volume, as you can see down here, it's really not that high. I can always increase the volume now in my drum rack. Okay, that's always something we can do in post-production. So we can get more into that. So here we are in the drum rack, and these are pretty much one hits on the drum rack. Now, notice this spacing right here. When I hit this on the drum rack, it's not quite playing just yet, and that's because I am still sending to my sample track, and I don't want to do that. So let's go to our master out. All right, there we go. We're not sampling anymore, so I'm going to bypass that. As a matter of fact, I do have an all, effects all channel that I was sending everything to, and I can bring that back to my effects all. So let's go ahead and make sure that happens. So you just look on your whole chain here and where would that be? Out. Huh. I'm not seeing that at the moment. That's okay. We'll do that later on. It's working the way we want. So now that's pretty quiet. It's actually doing negative 12 dB. Let's bring that up. Okay, so it's not actually hitting right when I have it on my hand. And it's going a little bit too long, too. So I'm going to move my starter point to the beginning of this. And I just want the first one, let's say, here. Okay. Now I'm going to copy and paste this again. Oh, Control-Z. That did not work. So if you do copy and paste like that, it actually took my drum rack right out. So what I want to do is go ahead and take this instrument, the small hits, and bring it down here again. You can always rename these, right? Small hit one, small hit two, so you know which one you're on. So now I'm going to do my small hit two. What this is doing is it's allowing me to do the different hits that I created. And you can also transpose this. Notice it's at four plus right now. Make sure that's at zero, and this is at zero. All of these should be at zero, actually. I don't want to transpose these unless I really choose to. And let's get this all these volumes up. I think we were at like six plus. Just kind of just match these all. Dro going up by 6 dB really just tells me that, you know, I should have got this louder off off the beginning. Okay, we have two more of our small hits to bring in here. So just got to remember which one we're doing. We're doing our third one now. Bring it into right there. And you'll find out why I'm doing this so tediously is that eventually we're going to just be able to play these. Right? Let's make this kind of in the same area. And you can change these buttons to match where you want them on your instrument. Okay, so if I want all these kind of as a square, I can move these around. So this is my last one, my fourth one. There it is. Zero and six, increasing. Now I can play these. Now, they're all the same pitch. But now this is where it kind of gets interesting is we can actually transpose certain buttons to be different pitches. Okay, let's do the number two here. We're gonna go up two, which goes a whole step higher. And let's go ahead and transpose this one up three. Uh, let's do that even up to five. All right. This one, I'm going to do a whole octave. 
which will be 12 up. Now that actually plays that whole riff as a loop. Or actually, sorry, as a one hit. Because in, in, in drums, it's pretty much, yeah, you got to play it as if it was like a hit of a drum. Now, if we want to have that be a loop and not be something in here, we can then bring just that one sound into our session view, okay? And I'm going to give you an example of that by dropping this one right here, right into where our sample is, right? So that is warped, and it came in warped. So we want to make sure that this doesn't warp right away. And one way to make sure of that is dropping it into arrangement view. And making sure that it's going to the click and it's at the right time. Okay, I believe I normally have a setting that says do not warp. Oh, that's what it is. It says do not warp long ones and it says auto warp short ones. And this is something that I want to take off. Okay. So loop warp short samples. Auto. And we should take this off. All right. Let's see if that might help out because it's coming in at the wrong tempo. Let's try that out again. Ninety two. All right, so what I had to do is actually just change the BPM to what it came out at, which is 92 BPM, matching that BPM. Making sure the click works with that. That's working. Um, I can also increase my gain here. 6 dB up. Man, it's still small. So let's go to 12. Copy this. Command C. Tab. I'm now going over to paste it in where I wanted it before. Command V. And let's play it here. So what we had here is actually, this is on our trace channel, and I really liked the warping that we had um, on our previous trace part. So let's go ahead and get into this channel here and show this warping, show automation, and copy it. Whoops, control Z, selecting it, copying it. This is our auto filter frequency. What I want to do is in this channel, auto filter frequency, I want to paste it in. There it is. Zooming out. We can have, even have this move just a little bit to match that it's a, a smaller 
file. There we go. All right. So now going to this one. So I didn't have to play that auto filter on it. Taking my metronome off. All right, so there you have it is that you have the manipulated sound. We kind of went the long way around. I didn't really have to render that out and bring it back, but I did want to show you just how you can create your own loop and then bring it into a drum rack and create your own samples, right? So this is our own drum rack and we're bringing in our one hits. Now, often with a one hit, it actually might be something that's more percussive and to change that, I actually might just want to make this shorter and even fade that out differently. Fade it in differently. And you can do that with each one. I think the fade out would be great to have. And the fade out changed again. So we're just making, we're kind of just making these more customized to be exactly what we want. So I, when it's a long loop like this, I probably won't want this on a drum rack because there's, there's better ways to change that sound. So I'm just gonna select it and then press the backspace button, delete it, and just stick with the short hits, okay? And that way, when we're playing along to our beat, let's take out our trace here, zero, pressing zero, and just play our beat by itself. I really like that short one right there. So what I want to do is actually create a few more of those, just the short ones. This is where one instrument can just do so much by taking just the smallest little sample of it, right? And then just changing the pitch. So this is the one we were working with before. We did an octave higher the first time. And what I want to do this time is do negative 12. Okay, do make sure our fade in and fade out are set. Similarly, make sure our volumes are set. I believe it was six. So really, it doesn't even sound like a trace anymore, right? Um, I'm gonna do just a little bit more um, customization here based on a, some new effects in Ableton 11 Suite. If you don't have this, um, yet I would really encourage you to try it out. Okay, so what we have here, let's see if I can remember what I named this as. I just put this in earlier, a few days ago. All right, cruising through my directory here and not quite finding it. Oh, I remember now. I put it into a different rack. So rack, here it is. So when I, when I create effects, like one-off effects, I put it in my effects rack. When I put something together, it's multiple effects or an instrument and effects, I group them into racks that are customized and I call it racks custom. And here we are with a few things. This is tree tone. 
And I'm just going to see what we can do here with placing this onto our track. All right. So what just happened is it actually took out my other instrument. So I'm going to command Z. So this is its own sound. And I'm going to give you a little bit more information. On that. Let's see here. Undo speaker on off. MIDI files are missing. That's not what I want. There we go. All right, I had to command Z a few times. So what you want to do is if you have something like this, this tree tone, which is a new um, effect that I kind of put together with a rare pipe to create some natural elements to kind of back up the sound. Um, if you put it over an instrument that already exists, it will take out the instrument, right? The, the uh, drum rack. So what we want to do is go ahead and bring this into a new MIDI device. Command Shift T and drop this in. Actually, I believe it's going to need to be a regular audio device. Yeah, so it changed it to audio. I'm going to bring that down. Now, this is a way to just to create some natural textures. What it's doing is actually creating some elements of nature and limbs. You can change up the wind and the speed, the rain. Now, what's kind of changing a lot of this is this pipe organ. So let's take that off. So you guys can hear a little bit more of this. All right. So there's a lot of ran randomization in this instrument. I just wanted to give you a little brief description of this because it's a great way to sample a portion of this into your sampler and then bring that into a drum rack or bring it into a one hit or just as a textural place of your different part of your song. Um, I do have other instrument racks here. Let's go ahead and see what this does. Part of this is, you know, the experimentation of what can work and what doesn't work. And as you get better at this, things will slowly progress. All right. There we go. All right, so I have a few things in here. So this is one that I created for a didgeridoo. But like I said, you can actually put this on anything, right? This is now my warped tres that I created the drum rack. And now I'm putting the didgeridoo effects, um, which actually include fade to gray, which is a instrument that is created for a lot of DJ effects, where it's actually taking a filter sweep coming in as a delay is spreading out. Okay, that's what's happening with that. So. Let's go ahead and play with this a little bit. So the, the beat master right here, the beat masher, sorry, um, is something that when you press play, you'll start hearing what it does more so. So let's go ahead and just play around with the beat master, masher a little bit.
as you can see in the bottom right hand corner you're seeing what it's doing with the filter sweep as i do the fade to gray right that's a few different automations macro automations coming in here to make that happen and then also our delay right here is being turned on and off with how much how much you have on there So as you can see, the instrument of the today doesn't sound anything like it. I took a lot of the, um, the beginning of the note out, so it kind of fades in, doesn't sound as attacky as a regular today. And obviously there's a lot of effects on it now. And then I'm doing those slides on top of it. Okay, so this is where an instrument can really be manipulated into anything. I'm gonna do, one more thing today before I get into just showing a little bit more about our, our school, which is online and in-person classes worldwide. Um, and that is taking a track such as this track we have right here and right-clicking it and saying convert to a melody track or a drum track, right? Let's go and say melody because we want to see if we can bring this into a different instrument. And the special thing about converting this into MIDI is that it the sky's the limit. Once you have something in MIDI form, okay, it, it brings it into just this basic um, device, but you can now move and bring in your own device, right? So let's go ahead and just solo this for a second and see what it sounds like. Sounds very MIDI-esque. If you have stereo speakers, you can kind of hear what's happening with that delay thrown around. Now I'm gonna change some of the sounds around just to kind of get more of this going on. Let's go ahead and hear those together now. I'm saying command and clicking on this other solo button right here, and I'm gonna turn this on. I'm gonna make sure that it's timed in right away with the same part, beginning of the phrase. Now that slide down, because the MIDI device doesn't really know what to do with it, It has just a little bit of other notes here. And what you can do now is because it didn't pick up that pretty good, very good, I'm gonna select that and press zero. All right, so now it's not doing those notes. Let's make sure that our track is a little bit louder here. Another way to make this louder is, let's make sure we have um, a utility, basic utility and put that on here so I can bring up the volume. I often put a limiter on too. So let's go ahead and just bring this up to the, where our drums are at, hear that together. So I just pretty much manipulated the basic operator that, that came in here, but really, um, and actually this is actually a lot better operator um, MIDI um, in the Ableton, it looks like it converts to than before. 
Um, but what you can do is pretty much I'll, I'll do a command D and duplicate this because I kind of like that sound actually. And when I duplicate it, it comes to a new instrument chain here. I go into instruments and I can go in and select different sounds. Okay, and I just drop that right into it. Not sure what it's going to be like, but this is, once again, this is now cueing this sound, right? It's a simpler, it's cueing this effect every time that it's played here. And it's changing the pitch based on what I played on the live instrument, the trace, originally. Okay, so let's go ahead and manipulate this just a little bit. Um, let's solo this and customize it. Let's bring that in with the other ones. You can work on your panning, just different sides or different instruments. And you can also duplicate these, Command D, to down below. And something that I wanted to try out is just how this would sound without the filter suite going on. So deleting it. And actually, This filter sweep is on still. I'll just turn, turn this off. And I want to purposely turn this one on. Okay, so I'm clicking and, and customizing based on this track, which is off. This track is on. Okay. And let's see. I want to make sure that this... Oh, I deleted my filter sweep initially. Um, that's unfortunate. But I can just redo that really quick. And I did this actually last class, but you guys can kind of see how I do it. I'm going to record enable. And I'm going to go into my effects. And record this. Stop recording, and there it is. So that one has a record in, and when I go to this one, it doesn't have anything. This kind of just changes up the energy, right? Okay, so I'm actually coming through this channel right now because it's on this recording. It's actually in auto mode. And this is another thing that I just randomly stumbled into. Uh, I didn't mean to actually tell you guys this today, but I'm gonna end it with this, is that if I am in this mode right here, okay, it means that monitor is off and you're only hearing um, the voice coming through my audio interface. Okay, but if I go into auto, all of the effects get turned on this channel and I'm in external in the microphone right here, which is where I actually recorded the trace originally. And I'm going to go in auto and I'm going to actually turn off the microphone in place here. And you're just going to hear this, this one part. So let's just go ahead and have some fun with this for a sec. All right. 
You're hearing my voice only through Ableton and using the effects of Ableton. This is a way that you can do a lot of really cool things, right? So you can play along now and do some vocals over the top. Now all the customizations of sound you can now bring in to effect. If I want more of that low end, or less of it. My voice. So right away, I was able to record in my nice microphone and do automations by literally, I don't even need a MIDI device. I can literally go in and just move this around with my mouse right down here. And it's recording this in as I record, okay? Such a powerful tool. Ableton Live is such a powerful tool. Now I'm turning that in off mode so we don't have any effects. And I just wanted to tell you guys, I'm here for West Coast Wednesdays at 11 a.m. to 12 p.m. Pacific Standard Time every Wednesday. If you guys want to learn more about Ableton production, digital audio workstations, Logic, Pro Tools, sound design, mixing and mastering, contact us. We have DJ courses as well, our producer program and academy. Thank you to Dave Garnish and the Garnish Network for sending this out worldwide to our network. We have locations from Hong Kong, New York, LA, and we are the San Francisco branch. Um, thank you, Soul Graffiti Studios, for hosting us as well locally at our boutique audio video studio. And once again, if you guys have any more questions, please contact us at sf at garnishmusicproduction.com or call us 510-463-GROW and happy to do a free 30 minute consultation with you guys. Um, there's a lot to learn with audio and we're here to help you, whether you're, you're starting off as a beginner or pretty advanced, already playing instruments for many years or decades and you wanna get more into being able to produce your own music and start DJing your own music um, creating soundscapes, maybe maybe producing music for licensing, please contact us. Um, there's a lot of resources also in the music business and how to license, how to distribute, and get your music out there. So our curriculum's been formed for some years now, and we're really excited to be keeping it up to date as the industry changes. So thank you for joining us, West Coast Wednesdays. My name's Justin Anchetta, and I'm very grateful to all you guys for tuning in. Once again, subscribe, like, and follow our pages, and go to our YouTube page to check out our playlist. We have our Live at 11 playlist that's getting to be like 20 or 30 hour long videos. A lot of resources to learn how to mix and master your music and move fluidly through session view and arrangement view, not only in Ableton, but also Logic. And yeah, just grateful to be here with you guys. Have a great rest of your day, and we'll talk to you guys really soon. All right, I'm actually back for just a little bit more if you guys are still with me, and that is because I didn't actually show you guys our school at all, which I'm really excited to share with y'all. So check this out. In just a minute here, I'm going to transition to our website. This is um, edu.garnishmusicproduction.com. And this is where you can check out all of our different studios worldwide. So here I am on the website. And as, when you go through here, we have Berlin, Hong Kong, Miami, Nashville, Los Angeles, London, 
New York and San Francisco. All right. So when you click on one, it goes to the respective pages, which are all pretty similar because um, we all teach the same curriculum. Um, we have our online and in-studio classes. Okay, when you click on the music production courses, this drop-down menu shows our short courses here. And then we also have our producer program, electronic music producer, and also modern music producer. And then our academy, which is our largest program. It takes about a year and a half to two and a half years to get through. And electronic music and songwriting production. We go into songwriting and theory in our entire academy, whether you're in electronic or songwriting, actually. So um, just a heads up that there will be songwriting and theory when you get into these larger hours. The goal being that when you go through the producer program or the academy, you can get to a point where you can actually not only produce your own music, but you can start producing other people's music. You can walk into a professional studio like Soul Graffiti Studios and... Yeah, jump right in and start recording a session in your digital audio workstation. If you want to sign up for a class, we have some coming up really soon um, in Ableton. We have um, April 11th from 11 a.m. to 3 p.m., a course coming up. If you contact us at sf at garnishmusicproduction.com or go call us 510-463-4769, we will give you a screaming deal on um, joining up with that class. It's every Sunday for nine weeks from 11 a.m. to 3 p.m. We also have a mixing and mastering course. If you click on any of these on our website, it goes to the information and you can read through around what you're learning and also what types of discounts you can actually get once you're a student with us. We also are doing this free 30-minute work session um, where we can analyze your music and talk music with you, just get, get to know you and where you're at. So, yep, here's where you scroll down. You can meet our teachers here by clicking on any of the teachers, and you can see our schedule and book the schedule. We have a course coming up on mixing and mastering starting um, the end of April on Sunday from 11 a.m. to 3 p.m. So you can also check that out, too. All right, that's the information I wanted to share with you guys. Once again, you can uh, check out Garnish. Uh, and, and go to one of our locations worldwide. And if you even go to our contact page, you can even see that there are ways that you can check out our location here, but also scroll down and see all of our different locations listed right here. You can just click on it and it will direct you to that spot. Whether you're in Europe or London or Hong Kong, there's some spot nearby that can potentially serve you. So, all right. Thanks again for being with us. Like, subscribe, and I'll see you really soon. Take care.